the diamond sutra secrets of initiation initiation is the beginning of a long journey inward journey along with the master to initiate the process of transformation it is the esoteric it is both science and art why is initiation to a master essential as such as man exists he is asleep even in his waking he is asleep and the sleep is neurotic he cannot wake up from the sleep on his own he may wake up but he still remain in slumber someone is needed to wake him up from such neurosis initiation is the process for him to remain in contact with the one who is awakened without this it is almost impossible for you to be awake you are capable of dreaming even when you are awake when it is said man is asleep this has to be understood man dreams 24 hours a day in the night we are close to outer world and continue to dream within our in, inner world during the day our senses are open our senses the organs of perception and organs of action open in the outer world of duality it is through these organs of perception and action we continue to experience the world of duality but the dream continues within just close your eyes and you will start dreaming again dreams are a continuity inside you are aware of the outer world but the awareness is in such a case we cannot envision reality although we are awake this is how dreams are imposed on reality what we actually see is our projection on reality everyone is plagued with dreams a father is full of his unfulfilled dreams you become an object of projection for your father your father will project his dreams in you he want to see his unfulfilled dreams fulfilled through you then whatsoever he understands about you gets mixed up with his own dreams so projecting one's dream on someone else is different than loving when you love someone you do not impose your dreams on them he will appear quite different than when you do not love him the other becomes quite different when you use the other as a screen to protect you to project your dreams when someone loves you the dream is different also the person appears different on the contrary when you do not love someone the person remains the same the screen is also the same but the projection differs in that case you are not using the other as the screen to project your dreams things can change again once again you can love the other and then he will appear different normally we do not see what this is 
we go on seeing our own dreams projected on reality. Master is different. He is not same to each one of you. Each one projects something different on the Master. In reality, he is one as far as he is concerned. If the Master himself is dreaming, then he will differ in each moment. It is so because each moment his interpretation will differ. But when the Master is awakened, then he will remain the same in all circumstances and situations. Buddha said the real test of an enlightened one is that he is always seen, just like sea water. It, its taste never changes wherever you taste it from. As a person, you are a projection of ideas, notions, conceptions, interpretations and emotions. Like a projector, you go on projecting things that are nowhere but inside you. The whole becomes a screen. Then you cannot be aware of yourself. This is deep sin. I am explaining certain aspects of prelude first. Then, what does a master look? and how does the initiation takes place. I have heard there was a Sufi master Hijra. One day an angel appeared to him in a dream and told him to save as much water as possible because the next day the devil would poison all the water and whosoever drank the water will turn Mad. So that night the Sufi collected as much water as he could. The phenomena really happened. Next day everyone became mad after drinking the poisoned water. The whole city became mad. No one knew what had happened. It was only the Sufi who was not mad. But everyone thought that Sufi had become mad. But he knew what had happened. No one believed him. He went on drinking the water that he has saved and remained sane by himself. However, he could not continue for long in this way. The entire city was living in an altogether different world and one day the rumor came that he would be caught and put into the put into prison. It was believed that the Sufi has gone mad. Finally, one morning they got hold of him. He had two options. Either accept the treatment for his madness or be prepared to go to prison. He was not allowed any freedom. He was condemned as mad. It was based on the conclusion that he spoke a different language that could not be understood by the masses. The Sufi was at a loss. He tried to remind people of their past through every possible means. The people had forgotten everything. He was incomprehensible to them. So they surrounded his house and caught him. At this the Sufi asked to be given time to cure himself. So he went to the well and drank some water. As he drank the water he, came, he became one like them. The whole city was happy that the Sufi was cured now. Now his madness is no more declared. You are asleep, but you are never aware that you are in sleep. When everyone is mad, 
and you are also mad. You can never be aware of this. Initiation is the way to awaken you from this sleep. By initiation is meant that now you have surrendered to someone who is awake. You are a part of the world, a part of its duality and its madness. Living in the world, you are always plagued with dreams. Such feelings can also come from someone who is in a sleeping state. Sleep is not always deep. In the beginning, sleep wavers. Sometimes it is deep, at other times it gets shallow. There is similarity between ordinary sleep and metaphysical sleep. Ordinary sleep fluctuates between various planes and levels. Metaphysical sleep also fluctuates. At times you are on the borderline. You are very close to being a Buddha. You are very close to be awakened. You are then you can then understand something that Buddha is saying. However, whatsoever is heard or understood is not exactly the same. But you do get the glimpse of truth. It is like looking at the sunrise from a room through a window. You are not as yet in openness under the vast sky. The master observes this. A person who is on the borderline of this metaphysical sleep needs initiation. Through his kashp, when master looks into the disciple, he finds that this particular disciple is on the borderline of this metaphysical sleep. He needs to be within the energy field of an awakened one or the enlightened master. He can hear something. He can understand something as well. He can see something. Everything around him is like a mist, yet still he feels something happening. Thus he approaches the enlightened one, not really knowing the essence of enlightenment. He is ready to surrender. This is the only way to wake up from his metaphysical sleep, sleep of lives. Only this much this person can do. Surrendering brings the understanding that something other than sleep is now happening. Somehow he feels this, but he cannot exactly know what this is. Whenever an awakened one passes, those who are on the borderline of this metaphysical sleep, can recognize that there is something different about this person. A different breeze, a different energy field surrounds this one. He behaves differently, he speaks differently, lives in a different way, walks differently. Something different has happened to him. He looks like one of us. But in reality, he is much more, much more than total human intellect can comprehend is the pulse of the animal. So those who are on the borderline can feel this, but the mist that surrounds them will always distract them momentarily. One moment they will feel something happening to them. Next moment, it is gone, but they are asleep. Also, the borderline sleep is transient. Someone can wake them up, and they can fall back into their sleep again. Before they fall back to sleep or deep unconsciousness, it is essential for them to surrender to an awakened one. And this process is known as the initiation. 
He is incapable of doing anything for himself. He knows that if he does not surrender now, it will be impossible later on. This moment cannot be lost. Such moments come only once in our lives. It is not in anybody's hands to be on the borderline once again. It happens for many reasons that they are beyond and these reasons are all beyond human control. It is the beginning of the process of initiation. On the part of the initiated, it refers to total let go, a state of total surrender, but you have to surrender. Your unconsciousness, your inner madness, your process of indecision, your ignorance, and that is all you put in the fire that Master creates around you. It can never be partial. A partial surrender is never surrender. It is like deceiving oneself. In partial surrender, you hold something within and that which is held may push you again into a deeper sleep. And when you have lost the opportunity for many lives, again, remember that the unsurrendered part will prove fatal. The moment it can go back to sleep, Surrender is always total, for surrender, total trust in an essence is an essential prerequisite. The moment you surrender totally, change begins to happen. Then you cannot fall back into the dreams. When you surrender, the entire projecting mind gets shattered. The projecting mind is born out of ego. Also, it remains connected to ego. So, it cannot exist without ego. Ego is the base of this projecting mind. When you surrender, you have surrendered the cause of your existence up to now. You have given up completely. Initiation means the person who was sleepy up to now is seeking help to awake, to wake up. He surrenders to one who is awake. Through this, though this seems simple, it is not so. When you go to an enlightened one to surrender yourself, what are you? Surrendering is your sleep, your dreams, and your neurosis. Nothing else needs to be surrendered because you are nothing more than your sleep, your dreams, your neurosis. In fact, your surren you surrender your sleep, your dreams, your neurosis, and the whole nonsense of the past that you have been carrying with you. From the side of the initiated, this is surrender, surrender of the past, but from the side of the one who initiates you, it is a responsibility for now and tomorrow. It is a responsibility for transcendence, for the birth of a new man. One who is asleep can never be responsible. Responsibility comes with awakening. This is the fundamental law of life. One who is asleep cannot be responsible even for himself. And the awakened one is responsible even for others. So when you come to an awakened one, he becomes responsible for you. That is why an awakened Krishna tells Arjuna, leave everything and come to me. Surrender at my feet, or as Jesus says, I am the truth, I am the truth, I am the gate. 
come and pass through me. I will certainly be a witness on the last day of your judgment. I will answer for you. This is a knowledge. Every day is the day of judgment. Not only every day, instead every moment is a moment of judgment. There is nothing like the last day. These were the words of Jesus that he spoke to his disciple. Who could understand him? And were within the energy and they were within the energy field of Jesus. And this has brought to them an understanding of the message of Jesus. However, the present day followers of Jesus cannot understand the message. They are only interested in business, not the process of transformation. Jesus was in fact saying, I will be responsible for you. I will answer for you in front of the Father. I will be there as a witness surrendered to me. I will be your witness. This is the responsibility of the Master when he initiates you. He undertakes to transform you so that a new being is born out of you. No one who is asleep himself can take the responsibility for you. One can be responsible for others only when he need not be responsible for himself. He is unburdened, he is no more. He is just the pulse of the unknown. An emptiness that simply echoes the whispers of the unknown. He is the manifestation of the unknown in finite form. So only such a person can in really initiate you, not otherwise. No particular person can initiate anyone. And if that happens, and this is happening every day, it is like a blind trying to lead the blind. However, in reality, both perish. One who is asleep cannot initiate, but the ego cannot help. This attitude is dangerous. The whole initiation, the whole mystery of it, the whole beauty of it, and has now become so ugly because of those who were not entitled to initiate. Only one who is not plagued with ego, who has no dreams within, can initiate. Otherwise, initiation is a great sin. In the olden days, initiation was not so easy. One has to wait for a long time to be initiated. Sometimes this waiting was for entire life. It was a discipline. And now this is a com competition among the pseudo-masters to initiate as much as possible. It has become an ego game. And sometimes initiation is not necessary because soul's journey always continues. It never breaks. And this you cannot know. Only thing is this, you have become oblivious of it. You have become oblivious of your inner capabilities. So someone has to remind you. Sometimes because of certain circumstances and situations, you can remember your own talent. No one is aware of his own inner potentialities and talents. With birth, this is forgotten. Master simply reminds you of your inner capabilities and the moment you become aware of your inner capabilities, in whatsoever field, your progress becomes attains tremendous speed. I belong to a Sufi family of enlightened masters. Sufis will initiate only when you had waited for a long time. 
When you have stayed with the Sufi master with an energy field, you are being prepared moment to moment. You have to wait. Without question. And when time comes, the master himself would say that the time has come. Sufi masters remained in whatsoever vocation was theirs. If the master was a shoemaker, then one would continue helping him in the trade for years. And you could not even question the relevance of shoemaking. So you went on helping the master and waiting for years. There was no talk of prayer or meditation. He would not talk of anything but shoemaking. Your waiting was prayer. Your waiting was meditation. Helping the master and shoemaking would cleanse you. I was never taught any prayer or any technique of meditation. I was a witness of all those who were initiated. My job was to fix the meditation room, take care of the personal needs of the sheikh, take care of the visitors and answer their queries when the message of the master was not understood. One day when I complained to another master about this, I was told that the elder master had given me everything, all that is, has been bestowed on you earlier and this now needs to go. When you are around the master, a simple waiting, this unquestionable waiting prepares the ground for complete surrender. So it was only after a long in wait, initiation was possible. My uncle, the Sufi master, Sufi Omkarnath, my mother, and my father was initiated on the night of Hindu festival of colors. My mother was married in 1949, February. In March, the Sheikh decided to initiate the three. This was a unique incident and a practical one to know what actually happens. Because what I am seeing, there are certain disciples who are on the borderline of this metaphysical sleep. They realized and asked for this process of initiation. In the second part, I will speak on certain other aspects of it. This is the beginning. My mother was asleep and was not interested in anything like initiation after it she had been pursuing her father for initiation for a long time and each time when she asked the master would tell her to wait for a little long. This was a father-disciple love relation. She got angry and she said from now onwards I will not ask him to initiate her. This one thing. So she was asleep and was not interested in anything like initiation. My father knew nothing of initiation. Just a month ago he had been married. They all resented the idea of initiation in their own unique way. But they were all on the borderline of the metaphysical sleep. They had to be brought by force so that my grandfather, the Sufi master, Sufi Brijmohan Lal Nakshwadi, Mujaddadi, Umajhariya, Razi Allah Ta'ala, could initiate them. Such is the way of the masters. Now everything is different. No one wants to wait. We are unconscious. Because of this initiation has become difficult. So in that case, the master gives you the first initiation. 
first initiation is like this you are going to begin a relationship with someone you got acquainted with the person in some function exchange your words he is allowed to reach up to your gate the you meet the person at your entrance to the house he is not allowed to come with you you can stand up by the by the gate talk to him there talk to him on phone but he is not allowed to enter your inner precinct even in the bed in even in the living room area this is the first initiation sometimes the master does that again it depends on if that be necessary the whole running of the present day mind is because of the fear of death we are only conscious of death our body there is no consciousness of that which is deathless and when the consciousness is stuck at the level of the body it becomes the progress becomes very difficult in the past the aspirants were conscious of the deathlessness within there was no hurry and initiation was easy in fact everything was easy if you are in a hurry the master initiates and master initiates you your running or your dream state it is a device a device that you can wait so in the first state when you are allowed to be entertained only at the gate this is the first initiation this is the device master uses to persuade you into the process yes i have given you this much freedom that you can that you can be entertained at my gateway at my entrance to the house and as things progress as the relationship deepens i will allow you to come inside on the contrary when master asks you to wait then your process of transformation cannot begin in such a case the master will allow you to wait afterwards so a little gesture yes it is said oh you can come to the house but you remember you cannot i cannot take you inside my parents will not allow you allow me to do that so we can remain at the gate and talk that's okay there's no problem in that and then the person can wait maybe months maybe a year so this is also necessary the master creates devices and techniques to play with while you are playing with such techniques you can wait as long as the master wants because at least you are allowed to speak to the person whether it is at the gate or not you are allowed at the out of precinct so he can wait he is happy that at least every evening he can come he can give you a company up to the bus stop he can drop you if they are walking drop you at the home when you reach at the door step he has to go or he can be allowed to reach up to the door gate and then you can remain and exchange a few words and then he will have to go this is preparation then you can wait you have no problem but even if in the first instance he is not allowed to come to your gate up to the gate then waiting becomes very difficult while you are playing with such techniques you can wait as long as the master wants 
And when master finds you are ready, then the second initiation happens. The second initiation was the first one in the olden days. Now it is the formal initiation and the first is the formal initiation, just an acquaintance. Just an acquaintance, the second one is informal one. For the second you need not ask. For the first one to be acquainted with you, the person has to ask. Can I be your friend? You think over it. You say, let me think over it once. Okay. There is no harm in being my friend. But you remember I cannot allow you to come to my house. So how are we going to meet? Then a certain ways. You can come to my house. We can talk at the gate. Or sometimes we can meet along the path, along the road, and we can share a moment. For second initiation, you need not ask the master. This he gives on his own. Surrender is on the part of the disciple and the responsibility is on the part of the master. Surrender and responsibility becomes the truth. And as soon as you are ready to surrender the master that is not the problem. Before that you will find thousand and one shortcomings in that person because you are not ready. As soon as you are ready to surrender the same person in whom once you have found the thousand and one faults becomes the master. Master have always been in existence. No master can begin the process without surrender. And when you can find someone to whom you have to surrender, that is good. But if you have not found the master, then the master appears. He comes whenever you are ready. When you are empty within, then the spiritual force rushes towards you and fills you. And when you feel that you are ready to surrender, do not give in. When moment comes, just surrender. So sometimes he comes in his small bits, touches you, then he goes away. Comes back again and says something, a gesture, a word, or a message that touches you. But you still do not know what is really happening. You find that this person is worldly, his talks are worldly. But he touches you and you have not learned to trust yourself either. When you are ready, do not hesitate to surrender. It is not important to whom you surrender. You can even surrender to a tree. Because the real thing is surrendering. Surrender to a tree and it will become your master. And whenever there is a surrendering, one always appears who becomes responsible for you. And this is what the initiation is. Dattatre, the Hindu mystic, became enlightened. And after enlightenment, he accepted 24 gurus. And the 25th one was his own body. He was going, that is a beautiful story to be explained at another time. Now there is a second part of this process of initiation, the science of esoteric. What actually happens in initiation? On its own, the energy cannot move forward. There are two stages in the process of development. One, you are in a state of nafs engrossed in the outer world of objects and beings through the organs of perception and action. This is known as the state of nerves. Your energy cannot move out of that. Anything that you see 
it appears to you with that vision. It is said about Sigmund Freud. You talk to him, everything he will reduce it to the level of sex. Anything you talk to him. So your energy may be stuck at the earth center or the water center and it is not moving from there. So the first the master activates that energy, allows it to move, gives a push. Then a process is initiated. It may happen that your energy can begin to move on its own or can remain stuck at that level. The process of initiation differs. And with initiation you become vulnerable to the energy field of the Master, to his tawajjo. You begin to understand his words and where these words are hitting. This tawajjo is hitting at what level? What, what esoteric state of your psycho, psycho centers? This is known as, this is done through just. Just means you are able to absorb that energy that Master is sending. All, all that energy that flows around you, how, how you are going to absorb it is just. And unless this happens, the journey to the other planes is not possible. So just and suluk are the two stages. Through just, you absorb the energy. And through sluk, you allow it to move to the other centers. And if the moments, if the realm of just is not cleared, then the other will create a problem. And the real process of initiation cannot complete. And progress will not happen. So this second aspect, the esoteric science and art of initiation, I will speak in tomorrow's session because it is it's still the same way maybe. How much has to be spoken? I can't say that now. It is not in my hands. When I, the process of speaking, the words begin to overflow. Only then I will know the direction, which direction it is moving and how long the flow has to continue. So tomorrow's session is another important one. Until then take care.